I'ma crush it, call me. Hi, I'm Anthony Walker, friend of the city and your host of Unsung, our region's nonprofit online news magazine show. This episode, we are coming to you from Mount Lebanon Park because after a long day at work, I like to kick back, surrounded by nature, and just relax and have a good time. It's day of giving time again. October 3rd is the date, and we have the details. Also, Christopher Whitlatch took a tour at the Woodlands Foundation, and Mike Sorg has a special report on how nonprofits can help with technology. It is a jam packed episode of Unsung, so let's get right to it. The Pittsburgh Foundation's Day of Giving has become a key centerpiece for fundraising efforts of increasing numbers of local nonprofit organizations as they strive to expand funding sources and broaden their bases of donor support. Many nonprofits have distributed save the date reminders to their board members, donors, and supporters by early August, two full months ahead of the fourth annual 24 hour day of giving to be hosted by the foundation on Wednesday, October 3rd. More than 700 nonprofits based in Allegheny and Westmoreland counties are registered to take part in this year's event, which is up from the 654 charities that participated last year. The foundation aims that its Pittsburgh Gives online program will raise over $7 million for the region's nonprofits this year. The Day of Giving has become a firm fixture in the fundraising calendar for many of our nonprofit organizations and has become especially important during a period when other funding sources have diminished or disappeared altogether, said Grant Oliphant, the foundation's president and CEO. Our Pittsburgh Gives program has provided much needed help at the most critical time, and it's not just about the money raised from the event. Nonprofits have been able to use this platform to attract new donors, create broader and more sustainable ongoing support. From the outset, this has been our primary goal for the Day of Giving. Participating local charities have completed and updated their profiles on the Pittsburgh Gives site to be eligible to receive contributions from donors that will qualify for equal prorated shares of the matching funds. The total match pool for the Pittsburgh Foundation will be $750,000 and for the Community Foundation of Westmoreland County, approximately $80,000. Pittsburgh Gives can be accessed at pittsburghgives.org. The Pittsburgh Foundation invites you to take to social media to help promote our area nonprofits. Want some graphics to do it? Well, they are available for download at pittsburghfoundation.org slash pittsburghgives underscore marketing. Have fun and see you online October 3rd. Christopher got out of the city and enjoyed a day in Wexford at the Woodlands Foundation. You have never been at a camp like this. Let's join Christopher for a tour. Hey, Anthony. Guess what? Unsung's at camp today. We're here at the Woodlands Foundation. It's a 32-acre facility just north of Pittsburgh in Wexford, and it's got year-round activities. We're going to find out everything there is to do right here. The Woodlands Foundation started as the Spina Bifida Association, but in 2000, we became the Woodlands Foundation, where we opened our doors to all people with disabilities and chronic illness of all ages. So we serve throughout the lifespan from 8 to 108. Here at the Woodlands, we have a 32-acre campus. We have indoor and outdoor activities. Some of the activities that you can take advantage of here at the Woodlands, we're very lucky. We have a adapted golf course. We have a therapeutic adapted aquatics pool. We also have adapted archery as well as a barrier-free and accessible campground where you're able to experience camping out in a tent. We have a multi-purpose sports court where we are able to explore and expose participants to all kinds of adapted sports and fitness programs. In addition to that, we run a really extensive arts and environmental program where um, it's more than just arts and crafts, but the activities that you can experience here are um, we integrate the environment into the arts and music world. One of our most exciting camps is our music camp and that runs in the summer and it is where we have world-renowned faculty, music faculty, come in and work with our campers and they work intensely, they can learn a new instrument, they can really hone their skill and get better and we end with a fabulous um, concert at the very end of the week so it's something to definitely come by and check out if you want to see what the Woodlands is really about. We also are able to provide here not only do we have a beautiful facility and it's barrier free but we have a lot of assisted technology we have a lot of adapted equipment especially adapted sports equipment so a lot of times I get the the question from someone who's interested in participating here you have a golf course that's great but I'm in a wheelchair and what I would like people um, of all abilities to know is that we are able to 
assist you in participating in any kind of physical activity or recreational program here through the different adapted equipment, through our, um, our staff who are all trained, um, trained staff that are able to modify and adapt our programs, our facility, our equipment to meet the needs and make participation available for everyone no matter what their disability is. The age range that we serve is what makes us the most unique. Many programs and funding stops at age 21. Here at the Woodlands we serve ages. We start at about six for some of our younger programs and we serve all throughout the lifespan and that's what really what's unique and original is that you can start here and it can help an individual work through the transition of their life from um, being a youth or a teen into a young adulthood. But what's, what's unique and what we're able to do that not a lot of large facilities like this can is really serve that adult population. So we serve throughout the lifespan and our goal is to really reduce those secondary conditions so that the life expectancy isn't cut short because of the inability to access um, recreational facilities. On average, we serve about 8,000 participants in a year. Generally, our participants come from Western PA, but we also have um, different individuals, especially for the summer camps that travel from um, different parts of Pennsylvania, Ohio, Virginia, West Virginia. We also um, rely heavily on donations and volunteers, as well as corporate sponsors. Well, you can just contact us here at the Woodlands and anyone that would like to become involved, um, whether it was to uh, volunteer or support us through a donation. We don't turn anybody here away for the inability to pay, so we have a Wonder Fund, which is a scholarship program. And the way you would get started is you can either visit us on our website, which is www.mywoodlands.org, or give us a call and to inquire about any of our programs. Once you showed interest, you would just schedule an intake interview and tour with me where we go over um, what needs that you or the participant has and whether we're able to meet those needs and to show you the facility and all that we have to offer. Thank you to the Woodlands Foundation for hosting Unsung. We were also on the road and visited the Pittsburgh Technical Institute to find out more about this year's Pittsburgh Give Camp. Let's take a look. My name is Erwin Hurst. I'm a software developer right now at CEI and GiveCamp was just something that I saw around the community. I saw other people doing it in other cities and it was something that I thought we could do here at Pittsburgh. And Josh Sager here at PTI kind of stepped up. He really liked the idea and he presented it to the management. Everyone at PTI so far seems to be really behind it. It's also something that's great for the students to get involved in. Uh, there are going to be a lot of people do a lot of interesting projects over the weekend. Give Camp is sort of a larger idea. It was started in 2007 by a programmer at Microsoft who decided he wanted to basically do this and give back to his community. And from there it sort of spread. Other people heard about it, decided that it was something they could do in their local city or town. And I, I think last year I was reading something in Cleveland where they, they've been doing this for a few years. And it was like, well, if Cleveland can do it, we can do it in Pittsburgh. So if you have some technical skills, we could use you. Uh, whether it's uh, a DBA with databases, a uh, web designer, uh, you know, PHP, Microsoft, any sort of open source technologies, it's absolutely resume builder. You're going to be working on a real project. You're going to start the project Friday and you're actually going to have it done on Sunday. So you'll have a real you know, working website or program out there that you were able to work on. You're going to meet some great people, learn some new technologies. From a volunteer point of view, we're looking at anybody that just wants to you know, be a part of the weekend and give something back. So what we're looking for are nonprofits that need some kind of technical help to come to our website and sign up. Tell us what your projects are because we have a lot of volunteers that are signing up. You know, they're interested in helping and we just need a direction. You know, tell them what needs done and, and we're ready to do it. You can go to our website, uh, pghgivecamp.org. There's also the central givecamp.org website that has sort of the high level of what GiveCamp is and, and how it all started. On our website, we have a sign-up sheet for volunteers, for sponsors, and also for the nonprofits to come sign up and document what projects they need. Or you can contact me directly, uh, erwinhurst at gmail.com. I'd be happy to answer any emails. Bricolage announced season four of Midnight Radio, the company's hit live variety show, performed in the style of a classic old-time radio broadcast. Ending Bricolage's 10th season are three brand new episodes, plus an episode just for kids. Each monthly episode features new and classic radio plays, vintage sound effects, musical guests, comedic news segments, commercial spoofs, and game shows complete with prizes. Prior to each episode, Bricolage hosts a happy half hour 
featuring refreshments and interactive activities designed to further engage the audience with the show. Past activities have included Live Mad Libs, Haiku Corner, Martian Creation Station, Zombification Station, Nightly Game Show Entry, Speakeasies, Tailgate Sports Games, Medical Displays, and Dunking Booths. In addition to the regular adult version of Midnight Radio, Bricolage presents Midnight Radio Junior, a special episode created for kids ages 6 to 12. The Junior version originally premiered in 2011, with two matinees adapted from the Superhero Edition episode, and it will continue in 2012, complete with post-show workshops in creating sound effects using everyday objects. More information at bricolagepgh.org. Yep, they're on the same day. Join Manchester Craftsmen's Guild from 5 p.m. until 7 p.m. on Wednesday, October 3rd for the MCG Jazz and MCG Youth Radical Days Art Fair and make your gift to Day of Giving while you're there. Make a donation of more than $25 while you're at the Guild and receive a special guest courtesy of MCG Jazz and Youth. Expand your creative horizons with hands-on projects and studio demonstrations. Get your photo taken in their photo booth help silk screen a t-shirt in their design studio, and watch a teacher throw a pot on the wheel. Drop into the MCG Concert Hall for Jazz Magic. Master Magician Paul Gertner blends jazz with close-up magic for two enchanting performances. Stop by the Dining Hall and let Bidwell Training Center's culinary art students make you a flaming banana foster or other fun food. More details are available at manchestersguild.org. And last but not least, you are cordially invited to attend the Gear and Beer Tri-State Conservation Fall Fest. The ORTC Fall Festival is comprised of heritage, environmental, educational, government, and trail groups primary from Ohio, Pennsylvania, and West Virginia, but also Maryland and New York. Fall Fest activities include a mountain bike ride, 35 or 50 mile road bike ride, 5K run walk, kayaking, canoeing, Colin Aboratum Trail Tour, auctions, raffles, children's bike rodeo, live music, food, drink, and free wine and craft beer tasting with proper registration. Thanks for watching Unsung. Be sure to share it with your friends. You can check out our previous episodes and our Unsung Uncut series on pittsburghonvideo.org. I've been your host, Anthony Walker, reminding you to keep it awesome, Pittsburgh. We'll see you next time. This guy's going to go take a nap under a tree. I'ma crush it Call me the golden boy Cause it shine whenever I touch it Don't rush it The flow comes naturally Actually The whole hood after me Masterpiece I outran a pace car Any